So we were talking about lateral ankle sprains, weren't we? We were. We were having, because I know you love MSK and oh. that look you're giving me now. She gives me that look all the time. Yeah, that's a terrible look, isn't it? So we talked about lateral, lateral ankle sprains and you were putting it in the context of what if you've been out dancing in a pair of heels and you've kind of gone over on your ankle? So we were going to discuss, I suppose, a little bit around the assessment and what to expect and I suppose the treatment as well. It's strictly come dancing season at the moment and let's say people are going out to dance classes and let's say people are wearing heels perhaps that they don't normally wear or doing moves that they're not normally used to doing. I've got a yep. pair of dance shoes that actually drive my ankle into... Um, a risky position. Inversion. For, thank you. Yes, that one. I just wanted you to, for the benefit of anybody that might uh, sprain their ankle or injure their ankle or be at risk of injuring their ankle or have a history of ankle sprain, just to help them understand what structures where are going on because they'll get, they'll sprain their ankle, they'll get a swollen ankle, they'll go to the doctor probably rather than anybody else. Oh yeah, strap it up, rest it, you'll be fine. But do they really understand what's happened and do they understand what they need to do to rehabilitate it? Which is a brilliant question. So there's three areas I would probably mark up anatomically when we're talking about an ankle sprain. Mm -hmm. There's the talus mm -hmm. or there's the lateral aspect of the talus. So the talus is this bone here. It's more which sits kind of underneath the underneath the, the tibia, tibia. The tibia and the fibula. The tibia there we go. Nice one. And it sits over the calcaneus. Your anatomy is brilliant. The other one's Thank the you. fifth styloid process, which doesn't look as prominent on your foot but it is on the one here mm. and then also we have the the fibula or the base of the fibula around here and if we're talking about ligaments there are three ligaments which we know are going to be involved in this one is the anterior talar fibula ligament because it sits anterior towards the front the other is the posterior talar fibula ligament which sits on the bottom or the back part of the talus and then there's the calcaneo fibula ligament those are the three ligaments which we're, we're kind of looking at as being implicated in an ankle sprain. Mm -hmm. But then we also have some muscles as well. So right the way up here, we have peroneus longus, mm -hmm. we have peroneus brevis further down, and then we have peroneus tertius. Mm -hmm. And they, they kind of come around in different positions. So peroneus longus, a peroneus brevis will come around the back of the ankle. Mm -hmm. peroneus, peroneus tertius, teeth in, comes down in front of the, the, the actual ankle bone here, the fibula. And... Peroneus brevis will insert into here, peroneus tertius comes in and inserts on the top part of it, peroneus longus kind of comes round underneath here and goes underneath the base of the first metatarsal. Mm -hmm. But all of those structures are there to stop you going out on the edge of your foot. Mm -hmm. And depending on the severity of that movement, you know, what trauma is involved, what position your foot's in, will depend on which one of these structures gets damaged. Mm -hmm. Probably the most common one is ATFL, anterior talofibular ligament. That's the one which tends to go first. The second one's calcaneo fibula, and the third one is the posterior talar fibula ligament, all because of the different positions on the yeah, foot. Yeah, because I mean, even if I'm doing that now, which is kind of, that's the one that's getting pulled, isn't it? Yeah, in absolutely. So most, most of the time I find people would go off a step mm -hmm. and then they end up with that inversion, that kind of ankle to go over on their ankle. And it mm -hmm. tends to be the anterior talar fibula. If it's more in a kind of a right angle position, it tends to be calcaneo fibula, but then if you just have to go off and your foot's up, up on that angle, that's when you get the posterior talar fibula one. That is a really difficult one to get, and I, I've read about them in textbooks, but I've never seen one. There are actually some ligaments which sit between the fibula and the tibia as well. It's a syndesmosis, which you can sometimes get different, different levels of ankle sprain. Mm -hmm. Because as you rotate, this round mm -hmm. and the talus pushes the tibia and the fibula apart mm -hmm. that ligament then gets strained and that can be that takes a long time to actually settle down the really severe ones you sometimes see a fracture here a, a styloid process mm -hmm. fracture That's where it evolves yeah i think it's uh, they, they be i believe they are called i believe they're called jones fractures mm -hmm. and there's about yeah. four different types of them Oh, and don't ask me about the classification, that, that's, that's way above my pay oh, grade. Oh, is that above your MSK pay grade, Marvel? It's definitely above, there's lots of things above my MSK pay grade. But you'll see varying injuries depending on the angulation and which bit of bone's pulled off. But they, they need to be put into a boot and they take time to heal. And sometimes they, they get pinned and, and plated with surgery. Oh. And actually, I do know of a podiatrist who a few years ago had that. And, it, and it's, it's a really nasty injury. But in terms of, if you've just got an ankle sprain, and I say just got an ankle sprain like it's a small thing, these things can take a while to rehabilitate. 
there's a, a number of things which you would go through. The, the initial one is, yeah, you do want to rest it to some degree, but only for a brief bit of time. Then you want to start to actually get the inflammation to settle down. So that's going to be your, you know, your ice, maybe your compression. Then you want to start thinking about rehabilitation. And the sooner the better for rehabilitation. So you want to make sure, you can ask me a question, go for it. When you say sooner, are we talking days, months, <sighs> weeks? Depends on the individual, but probably first to second week. So right. first week I'd be thinking, take it a bit easy. Second week I'd then be starting to look about, look on rehabilitation. And that can start with simple things like movement of the ankle, rotation movements, single leg standing, single leg standing, that kind of stuff. Yeah, single leg standing, bands as well. So we wrap a tension band around it, an elastic band of sorts. It's a, like a TheraBand mm -hmm. and you do some exercises that way. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I find is that traditionally people would only rehabilitate the ankle in this direction. Yeah. Flat deflection, dorsiflexion, but actually because it's a three-dimensional structure, we need to be thinking about other ways to do it. Mm. And the statistics, and I can't remember the statistics, but I know the statistics which show that once you've had an ankle sprain, you're at massive risk of another one and you get this thing called chronic ankle instability. And I've, I've used joint mobilisation to help people who've had long-standing issues with ankles where they've, they've had a sprain, they've had another sprain, maybe another sprain, but it hasn't been rehabilitated properly. And you just need to do some mobilization just to get the joint to feel better, if nothing else. It doesn't move anything particularly, but it just helps it to feel better, helps the brain to know what's going on with the, the proprioception and the position in time and space. And it really makes a difference, it makes a massive difference. Do you think most people who've had an ankle sprain know how to rehabilitate it properly? I think you can go on Dr. Google, you can find a lot of information, but, I'd say a lot of people, they have a minor ankle sprain mm. and it settles down on its own really quickly so they don't need to go and see someone else, but it's only when it becomes a problem further down the line or it becomes repeated, that's when people go and find out. But I think people, I think people have general idea. You know, talking about the, the, the rest and the rehabilitation, we, we've moved more towards rehabilitation now. Before it was very much, you know, rest, ice, compression, elevation. Now it's, it went to police, which was protect, offload, ice, compression, elevation. And now it's peace and love. And I can never remember the full acronym for peace and love. But it's all about protecting initially, and then it's about rehabilitation afterwards. So I think there's a lot more information coming out now, but people are still a little bit in the dark about it. So when you were in uh, MSK practice, mm -hmm. and you were doing <clears throat> assessments on people to test their ankle stability, even if they've not necessarily come in to see you with an ankle sprain history. Yep. I mean, you might have got that out of the history. How often did you find when you were looking at people's stability that they had issues that they perhaps were unaware of? Huge amount of people with, I suppose, weakness or fatigue very easily to their calf muscles. That's a big one. You would see people standing and you would see the... You'd see all the, the tendons firing where they were really working hard just to kind of stand up straight. There'd be a couple of things we'd do in terms of checking for force. So we'd look at something called the supination resistance test, which is how much force does it take us to apply to the foot to get the foot to twist over onto the, the outside edge oh. to go into that inverted position. And we'd find that people with a, a lower supination resistance or a lower force needed to do that would suffer more with, with ankle sprains because these muscles would have to work a lot harder. And the force to get them to go from there to there is, is a lot smaller. You'd see people with, with various kind of things going on, but a lot of it came down to, I suppose, weakness around here, poor control, maybe a lack of exercise around there, and, and footwear. So the high-heeled shoe puts you into a, puts you into a higher position, um, more of an Aquinas position, and that means that the ankle joint tends to rattle around a little bit. And also, because it's a three-dimensional movement, you'll get plantar flexion, you'll get inversion, and you'll get adduction. And that just leads towards that kind of tilting over on the outside edge. Mm. But they can, be, they can be rehabilitated beautifully. 12 weeks, I would expect most ankle sprains to, with the right rehabilitation, to settle down quite nicely. For some people, it might be a bit longer. For some people, it might be, might be shorter. But I'm always, I'm always talking to people about you know, if something hasn't really settled in three months and there's no noticeable difference, that's when you need to be thinking about getting it checked out. And you know, it may, look, may go down the route of ultrasound, x-ray, that kind of thing, but there's lots of things which can be done. If an injured ankle is rehabilitated properly at the beginning, you know, <clears throat> and in mid to longer term, does that reduce the 
risk of it re-spraining? Depends what the risk factors are there. If you've got someone who takes a very low force to get them to go around to the edge, you've got to really work on that strength. I think it, it's like anything. It's not, you can rehabilitate it, it will help, but it's that continued work that people do. And if they know, I mean, we, we hear the term weak ankles, which always makes me cringe. But if there's someone out there who has a, who has a possibility they're going to sprain their ankle again, you put the right package of exercises in for them, then yeah. I'd say it reduces the risk. doesn't get rid of it completely, but it reduces the risk significantly so that they can have a better quality of life. Cool. Thanks for explaining that, Dave. It's all right. And I hope this isn't a permanent marker as well. No, it's not. Oops. Cool. <laughs>